The shot lace principle has been very useful to us as a tool because it lets us predict for a system that was at equilibrium and that we perturbed how that system is going to respond. But what if someone just places a system in front of you and asks you what that system is going to do? Well, in that case, you don't know whether or not it's reached equilibrium or it's been perturbed in one direction or another. But if you are able to collect some numerical information about the concentrations and or the pressures, you may be able to calculate whether or not you're at equilibrium. So this is what's called a reaction quotient. It's this Q over here, and you can see it has the same form as the equilibrium constant. The only difference is that we are going to plug in the present concentrations or pressures instead of the final concentrations and pressures after we've reached equilibrium. Now we know as time progresses that eventually we're going to establish equilibrium. So whatever value Q is, it must gradually over time approach the value of K. So there are three possibilities. Uh, one possibility is that we might already be at equilibrium, in which case nothing will happen. Uh, that's the definition of equilibrium. If, however, we have an excess of products, then Q will be larger than the equilibrium constant. And so what has to happen then is that the amount of products needs to decrease and the amount of reactants needs to increase so that Q will diminish and eventually approach a value of K. The other possibility is that we have an excess of reactants compared to products, in which case Q is going to be smaller than K since the reactants are in the denominator. And that must mean that the reactants will need to be partially consumed and turned into products so that we can reach our equilibrium value of K. So if Q equals K, we're at equilibrium. If Q is less than K, we're going to need to generate products. And so the right side of the reaction is favored. And lastly, if Q is greater than K, we're going to need to generate more reactants. And so the left side of the reaction is favored. Now I used QC for illustration and KC, but of course if we're dealing with pressures, then it's the exact same deal. Um, we'll calculate Q using the present pressures and compare it to our K, which refers to the ratio of the final pressures. All right, let's say that we are presented a container which is filled up with hydrogen, iodine, and hydrogen iodide gas related by this equilibrium reaction, which has a Kp of 53 at 500 degrees Celsius. And we perform some measurements and find out that the partial pressure of the H2 is 0.5 atmospheres, of the iodine is 1.25 atmospheres, and of the hydrogen iodide is 5 atmospheres. Which direction is this reaction going to proceed? Or has it already reached equilibrium? Well, to determine this, first we need to calculate Q. So we go ahead and write down our equilibrium expression, or the, the form that matches it for Q. And so we take the pressure of our hydrogen iodide squared over the pressure of the iodine and the hydrogen, which are our reactants, and just plug those numbers in. So we have five atmospheres squared over 0.5 and 1.25. The difference between this and equilibrium be that these aren't the equilibrium pressures. Now we get a value of 40. All right. Well, now we just have to compare this to our equilibrium constant. So our equilibrium constant has a value of 53. So that must mean that we are going to need to produce more products because we need for this number to go up to approach the 53 value. And so that means we need to, to generate more of these products in the numerator and or decrease the amount of reactants in the denominator.